All right, Father, we ask for your blessing on this time, Lord. We ask that you would open our eyes to see the great privilege that we have in prayer, and Lord, envision us to grow in the ministry of prayer. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, grab your Bibles, turn to Psalm 113, and you want to get something to take notes with, okay? Psalm 113, right, and something to take notes with. This is, this is one of the things that we do um, to facilitate corporate prayer. Do you ever, how many would say, sometimes I can tell I'm getting stuck in a rut in my prayer life? Maybe, uh, yeah, okay, so a few. Uh, maybe uh, pray some of the just the same things over and over again, and you'll catch yourself maybe praying for the same kind of needs over and over again. The same kind of requests just keep coming up. Um, pretty soon, I mean, I've even heard some people they start praying and it's just, "Oh Lord, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, we love you, Oh Lord, Oh Lord, thank you for loving us, Oh Lord, Oh Lord," and and um, and and it's good to acknowledge Him for who He is, but let's grow. Amen? And so one of the things that we've done is we've said, hey, guess what? Um, just like the Word of God can be, whenever you get the picture that uh, a marriage relationship is the picture of the relationship that Christ has with the church, now all of a sudden, okay, if the whole of God's Word is a, a manual, a principle book, the Word of God for your life as a believer, a follower of God, then it's also a marriage on manual. From Genesis to Revelation, there's instruction on how to treat, how to, how to invest, how to pursue one another as man and wife. Well, the same thing is true in terms of prayer. The whole of God's Word is a prayer manual. The whole of God's Word is a prayer book. Does that make sense? Okay, so how do we access it? Well, okay, I learned this from a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Pastor Henderson, and, and uh, he, he turned me on to this approach to corporate prayer. Uh, a little bit of history, our church, whenever we started, we started with a Tuesday night prayer meeting. Every, th this is the most important ministry that we have as a local church. It even trumps our ministry of outreach, discipleship. It trumps our Bible studies. Why? Because we're calling on the Lord for a kingdom agenda. Together, we're calling on the Lord for the reality of His Word. In other words, it's, it's God answering the prayer of His people that everything else comes out of. Right, our, our, our opportunities for evangelism, our opportunities to make discipleship, our opportunities to get the Bible open with more people, this comes in response to us asking the Lord to give us souls. Does this make sense? Pastor Spurgeon, back in the day, he would describe their prayer meeting as the boiler room, right? The boiler engine, the boiler, the, 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 the energy source for the entire ministry. Everything he said succeeded or failed based upon what happened in their corporate prayer ministry, and, and I, I believe that's the case. We've seen God at, at Midtown Baptist. We've seen the Lord uh, answer the prayers of His people in so many ways. I could, I could do a whole week of conferences just telling you the stories of how God has answered our prayer from, from the big, very beginning, uh, getting to go to Midtown, to the, to the building that God gave us, to the, to the souls that were saved, uh, uh, people who, you know, that we prayed for that were homeless ended up becoming leaders in the church and, and, and disciple makers in our ministry. And all of these things happen as we prayed for God to give us the reality of His Word in the life of our ministry. What, what I want to share with you, because we're very limited on time and I want to make sure that we have time to pray, is I want to talk to you about a 4-4 pattern for prayer, a way to approach your Bible as a prayer manual, a book for prayer. And I want you to think about it in terms of, okay, so when we talk about the 4-4 approach or pattern to prayer, think about somebody leading worship. Do you remember the uh, old-time worship leaders? And how would they do it? How would they lead worship? The hand would come up, right? And then where does it go? It goes down, and then what does it do? It goes to the side, and then where does it go? It goes the other side, and then we're still not done. Yep, it goes right back up. Does that make sense? And so for a whole song, um, maybe the first and third verse and every chorus, it's over and over, 
Okay, so use that to help you remember what this pattern of approach is for prayer ministry. And so, in your Bible, we're at, in Psalms 113, and the Bible says, Praise ye the Lord, praise, O ye servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Why? Look at verse 4. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high, who humbleth Himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? Exclamation point. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. How many know that when you're in a dunghill, you want God to lift you up out of that thing? I mean, He is a good God. That he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. Isn't that a good reason to praise the Lord? That list of reasons about, of, of who God is and what God has done. Okay, so in our, in our 4 4 approach to using Psalms 113 tonight for our manual for corporate prayer. I want us, to, I want us to, to, to think about our approach. Okay, so the, the, the hand comes up. What are we doing? That's going to represent, as we view Psalm 113, an upward look, an upward view. Okay, as we view Psalm 113, what are we doing? We're going to reverence the Lord. What we want to do is we want to recognize God for who He is in the text. In other words, whenever we come into... The, the, the presence of the Lord with thanksgiving and praise, one of the things that we want to do is acknowledge Him. For example, in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, how does the Lord Jesus Christ, when He's teaching us to pray, how does He start? Anybody know the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, which art in heaven. What is that? That's an, a, that's an acknowledgement of who He is, where He is, but then also what He is, right? Hallowed be Thy name. Okay, so whenever we look at this passage, we want to see who God is in this text. We want to lift our eyes up and reverence the Lord. In other words, we're looking for points of reverence, points of acknowledgement. Okay, so look at Psalm 113. Who is the Lord in Psalm 113? So for this to work, your eyes need to be on the text. And if you've got something, you see some way to identify who the Lord is, why we reverence Him, how we acknowledge Him. Just shout it out really really loud. High above all nations. Lord, You are the one who is high above all nations. What else? His, his glory is above the heavens, okay? Okay? Do you see that He's praiseworthy? Right? We're, 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 we're capping this thing beginning and end with praising the Lord, right? What about the name of the Lord in verse 2? What is it? It's blessed. Blessed for a moment or forever? It's forever blessed, isn't it? Okay, do you see what we're doing here? We're, we're trying to identify, to acknowledge who God is in the text, and we want to acknowledge that. We want to reverence Him for that. Does that make sense? So as we enter into His presence with thanksgiving and praise, we're just going to reverence, we're going to acknowledge who God is in the text. And so when we get in a little bit, when we break up into groups to pray, let's pray with our eyes on the face of the Lord Jesus. Does this make sense? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, now I'm not saying that, that, that this book of paper and ink is actually... Jesus Christ in the flesh, right? But it is a representation of who He is. Does that make sense? In other words, if I want to see what Jesus looks like, if I want to see what God looks like, well, I got I to gotta look into His mind, don't I? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We want to have the mind of Christ, and so we want to we wanna hear from Him about who He is. So when we pray, Let's, let's, get our, let's get our focus and our attention on Psalm 113. Okay, when we see God for who He is, what does that automatically trigger in us? Let me react it out. When I see God for who He is, now that should trigger something in terms of a response. Do you see that? Right? I want to acknowledge 
how, who God is, affects me. So the downward stroke of our 4-4 four, four, our four, four approach is the response. The revelation of who God is should demand a response on our, our, our part. In other words, who is God in our lives and, and, and what response does that demand on our part? Is there something here that we need to have faith in? Is there something that we need to believe? Is there something that, about who God is that should encourage us? Right? Is there something about acknowledging the Lord for who He is that rebukes us? In other words, what ways should we be surrendering, acknowledging, and obeying Him? And so here, the Lord Jesus, when He taught us to pray, He started with acknowledgement. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. And then what does He say? Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on, right, in my life, just as surely as it is in Your presence. Does that make sense? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So there ought to be a downward response. Okay, look at Psalm 113. What would our response be to this God, uh, to our God who reveals himself as he is in Psalm 113? Thankfulness, humility. What's the first word in Psalm 113? Oh, we're, we should, in prayer together, we ought to get our praise on, brothers and sisters. There's a lot to praise the Lord for. So this is a celebratory psalm, isn't it? I mean, look at how it ends. People are having babies. Barren people are fruitful, right? I mean, has God given this church? Has God given the ministry of greater grace fruit? Do you have spiritual babies? You, I mean, you didn't, maybe some of you didn't think about it that way, but it's good to have babies running around, isn't it? 630 what churches around the world? I mean, that's, thank you, Lord, right? He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a, what kind of mother? joyful man if God's used you to see souls come to Christ there's reason for praise there's reason for rejoicing so as you as you break up into your groups and pray what are the points then once we've acknowledged the Lord how do we respond and I and I and I get these prayer points from the text itself is everybody tracking with our approach so far okay so we acknowledge him for who he is that produces a response the downward stroke that produces a response in us Okay, now the hand goes over the inward stroke. What do we need to receive from the Lord? Right? What requests, maybe that's another way to say it, what requests need to be made? Right? If I reverence the Lord for who He is, I respond to Him for who He is. Now, what requests do I have? What inward need does this text manifest that I have? What are some things that we could request from the Lord based on Psalms 113? Forgiveness? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that mean get, Lord, some of us might be in the dunghill tonight, right? Oh, Lord, I got a request. <laughs> if you could do that for, the, for, 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 for this guy, I mean, if you can do this for this song, Lord, pu pull me out of the dung heap, right? I am needy. Lord, set me with princes. Set me with the people. How about, how about verse 9? What would be a request that could come out of verse 9? Fruit, right? Give me a child. Help me to win somebody to Christ. Lord, I need a disciple. You know what else you need to do? What else the request? Some of you, maybe you don't feel like praising tonight. Maybe that's the request. Oh God, you are praiseworthy. Strengthen me. Open my eyes to praise you. Right? You are all deserving of all glory, all honor, and all praise. And I want to be all in. Lord, help me to praise you. Okay, is this making sense? Okay, so we see God for who He is. That demands a response on our part. Right? We acknowledge Him. And then we respond to that acknowledgement. But then now we have requests. We're going to, not, not just for ourselves, but maybe for others. Right? So, so we don't just stay over here praying for ourselves. When that hand goes from inward to outward, okay, if inward is praying for me, what is outward going to be? Praying for others, right? Right, there ought to be a readiness after we've requested for ourselves, there ought to be a readiness, the outward stroke. Uh, how do we need to pray for others? In what ways do we need to be ready to minister to others? Where do we go from here? Right? How, well, is there some form of spiritual warfare that we want to be engaged in in terms of prayer? 
How are we to minister? Who are we to minister to? Okay, so the Lord, he starts out acknowledging the Lord uh, in the Lord's Prayer, acknowledging the Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? Then there's the response, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in our lives just as it is in heaven. Okay, get, he says in the inward request, give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. That's the inward request, but now the outward request is what? Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Lord, protect our people. In, he's engaging in spiritual warfare. Okay, so, so there's an outward focus. Okay, so Psalms 113, what are, what are some ways that we should be engaging in spiritual warfare? Or what are some ways that we can make requests for others where we can begin to intercede on behalf of others? out of Psalm 113. Does anybody see anything? Praying for the poor and needy. That's really good. What else? Okay. 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 Yeah, pray for the nations. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the nations of the world need to praise his name. Uh, if we're going to pray for ourselves to be lifted up out of the dunghill, how many know somebody who's really going through it right now? Uh, they would say that they're in a, in a dunghill place in their life. Oh Lord, lift them up, right? You see that? Uh, let's pray for one another for open doors. Paul says, pray for me that I'd have boldness. Right? Wisdom and boldness to walk through open doors, to preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit the way, in a way that will impact lives to consider the gospel of Jesus Christ. Shouldn't we pray for one another to have opportunities to share the gospel this week? Don't we want, don't we want each other? Don't we want everyone in this church, right? Birthing, being used of God to birth new souls into the kingdom? We have not because we ask not. The very first time I discovered this, I was just getting started as the college minister at the church that sent us out, and we ha I just announced, we're going to do corporate prayer. Seven people showed up <laughs> out of a ministry, a college ministry of 200 and some. Seven people show up for corporate prayer, and uh, praise the Lord, man, we prayed. And at the end of that time of prayer, people are just getting ready to go and, and the thing, things are shutting down. And this lady comes up to me, she's a young woman in our ministry, came up and said, Pastor, I got to share this with you. And she started weeping. And she said, uh, I've got a gal who's been staying with me over the summer. It's one of my roommates. And, and she is absolutely hard toward God and the things of God. She doesn't even want to hear the gospel from me. I've tried I've been praying for her. I've been trying to share the gospel with her. And she says, I just feel like, man, if everybody would pray for her, um, who knows what would, could happen. And then she started weeping hard. <laughs> she said she's going she's gonna to leave at the end of next week. She's going to go back to St. Louis, and she's going to end up in this right back with this party crowd where her life was spiraling out of control when she came here. I'm worried. I'm in fear for her even her physical well-being now and she was just desperate and I and I thought okay well man let's get everybody back together hey guys one more prayer request we all got back together and and I explained the situation and I said okay can we pray and everybody agreed they could pray and all right let's agree together let's call on the Lord God's not willing that any would perish that all would come to repentance and so let's call on the name of the Lord amen and everybody said amen and so I started praying and I said Lord we're asking you for this woman's soul. And God, I know that she has a free will and she has to exercise her choice, but Lord, I know you're a hard man to ignore when you want to be, uh, you, you can be very persuasive. And so Lord, would you bind the enemy, open her eyes to the truth of the gospel, and Lord, would you pour out your Holy Spirit on her this week? Lord, and this is where I stepped in it, I said, Lord, we're trusting you to do that this week before she goes back to St. Louis. Lord, this week, we're trusting that you will lead her to a place of acknowledging the truth. Lord, we're trusting that this week, the report that we will hear is that she'll come to the place where she has acknowledged the gospel. And Lord, we're trusting you for her soul. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And as soon as I said amen, my heart immediately smote me. Because what I thought was, is what have I just done? I put God on a timetable. That's so presumptive. Lord, please don't strike me dead. <laughs> right? I, was just, I was just a guy starting out of ministry, and I, I, just, I, I, I just put demands on the Lord. What was I thinking? <laughs> and driving home, I, I probably had one of the most fervent times in prayer. I said, God, we're trying to start a prayer ministry. And your people, I believe you answer prayer. You've answered so much prayer for me. God, I want them to believe that you answer prayer. And Lord, could you, if that was presumptive, then Lord, please forgive me. <laughs> but oh God, I, not just me, we desperately need you to do this this week. <laughs> please, sir. Please, sir. This week. Every day I called her, the girl in our ministry. Have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? Have you heard anything? The following week, before she was going to, that week that she was going to leave, on Monday, I get a phone call. I pick up the phone, and all I hear is, <laughs> I'm like, hello? What, what is it? I can't even tell. Was then it's just full on bawling. I'm going, who is this? What's wrong? Did, I'm thinking, did somebody die? And uh, she goes, all I hear is, she's saved! <laughs> this girl had just decided she was compelled to read the Gospel of John. She just started reading the Gospel of John. She went all the way around. She'd come back around the horn, and she started again. And in reading the Gospel of John, her eyes were opened to the, the Gospel. She saw it. She saw herself for her where she was in her sin and her lostness. And she, with John open on her bed, she got down on her knees in her bedroom and she confessed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She called on him for forgiveness of sin. She called on him to wash her sin away and ask Christ to come into her heart, into her life, and to save her. And she just, she, she, she comes out of the room, she talks to her friend, she's like, I just gave my life to Jesus. And her friend is just blown away. Of course, then that next week, we didn't just have a prayer meeting. We had a praise meeting, and it's never been the same since. Uh, we, I can't tell you person after person that we thought it was impossible for them to hear the gospel, but then we just ganged up on them in prayer and told on them, just tattled. <laughs> Father, you see them? They think that you don't even exist. <laughs> Lord, we're asking that you do something about that. <laughs> Don't let them get away with that. Oh, we'd pray for people, and then God opens a door of utterance, and, and maybe one of our members, or, or just through some other means somewhere else in the world, God pours out His Spirit on them in conviction, and we've seen people come to Christ just through tattling in Jesus' name. Does this make sense? Don't we want everyone to bear fruit? Okay, so we acknowledged, we responded, we requested, right? We re we, we made ourselves ready. We engaged for others. Okay, so we got one other place for the hand to go, right? Right? We, we end the way that we started. We want to reverence the Lord. And notice how Psalms 113 ends. What's the last phrase? Praise ye the Lord, right? Praise ye the Lord. We, stop, we end with worship. We close in prayer just as we began. Right? Maybe, you know, as we get down to the end of our time, we ask somebody to close in worship, but this is how the Lord finished. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. What's he doing? He's giving praise to the Father. Amen. Does this make sense? Brothers and sisters, let's get eyes on Psalm 113 and let's use this manual. And it's, just, it's not just Psalm 113. From Genesis to Revelation, we can do this. We can use the Word of God. It's, it's Scripture-based prayer that shows us, it's a prayer man manual to show us how to let our requests be made known unto God. Amen? All right, let's pray. Let's get to work. Let's make sure everybody has somebody to pray with. Let's not have anybody left out praying by themselves. Let's make sure everybody's got at least one other person that they're calling on the Lord with.